Yeah, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I hope you brought your sword tonight. Amen. Praise God. I brought mine too. Uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter number 6. We're starting to get into some of this uh, real good stuff here. Uh, I love the grace of God. It's something about the grace of God that this is always this. I'm telling you, it makes me smile when you talk about the grace of God. It's amazing. That's why they wrote the song about amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved an old wretch like me. I once was lost, Brother Randall, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Well, we started out in Romans. I don't know how many months ago now, but we went through chapter 1. Uh, chapter 1 started out talking about the wrath of God, that it, was, it was, would come to uh, every person who rejected Jesus. We found out in chapter 2 and chapter 3 that we're all sinners. Everybody in this world is a sinner. Uh, I don't care if you're Jew or Gentile, if you're religious or if you're a pagan. It does not matter if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. We are, we are sinners and we're headed for hell. We need a Savior. Amen? Amen? Can everybody agree on that? We needed a Savior. And so Jesus had to come. Uh, Romans chapter 3 said we all fall short of the glory of God. No matter where you are in life, we all fall short. We all miss the mark. It also said that there is none perfect, no, not one. Last week in chapter number 5, we found out the Bible called to our attention that there was two men that, that impacted this world. Do y'all remember who those two men were? Adam and Jesus. There you go. The first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam come and he fell in the garden. He sinned and Eve was deceived, but Adam just flat out sinned. And we lost dominion in this earth. We forfeited it, if you will, to Satan, to Lucifer. That's why he's called the prince of the power of the air. And we forfeited it over to him. But Jesus come along, praise God. Jesus come along when the time was just right, and he restored everything that we lost in the Garden of Eden. Jesus came and restored it back. And he brought the kingdom. That's why he said the kingdom is here. Amen. Because he brought the kingdom. He brought dominion. He brought uh, everything that we need to subdue this world and subdue our enemies and subdue our flesh. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Brother Garrett, sometimes it's hard. It's real hard. This old flesh likes to rise up. And, but I'm going to tell you something. The Lord give us the power to subdue this flesh. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. He was talking about he had to crucify that flesh. By the way, I'm going to tell you something that I heard this week before we get into tonight, uh, Romans chapter 6. It, it's, it's kind of funny. I don't know if you'll get it. Sonny didn't really get it, but I'm going to share it with y'all anyway. She'll probably roll her eyes if she hears me. But uh, anyways, did you, any of you know that the Apostle Paul's daddy was one of the thieves that hung beside Jesus on the cross. Has anybody ever heard that before? Yeah, the Apostle Paul said, my old man was crucified with Christ. Brother Jeff, he got it. There we go. Brother Jeff got it. Thank you, Brother Jeff. Amen. He said, my old man was crucified with Christ. He's actually talking about his old self. See, we're, we're dead to sin. My old man died, was crucified with Christ. Some of y'all get that on the way home. Anyway, let, let me move on. Praise God. But uh, thank you, Brother Jeff. Amen. Oh, the, this, listen, this one guy, he was letting them loose the other day. But I love what the Bible tells us. And it said that God demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, we don't have to be perfect to come to God. Amen. People like to say, I'll come to God when I get my life in order. And what do we say? Then you'll never come. You'll never come because you can't get your life in order. Only Jesus can do that. Only God does the change in you that you need. Amen. To turn and make it to heaven. But God loves you and God loves me. And you need to understand that God chose to come for you. Amen. If it was only you, make it personal. If it was only you, God would have still come because he loves you that much. And the Bible says for one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. 
But because of one man's obedience, we became righteous. Thank you, Lord. I love what Romans 5.20 said where we ended last week. It said that where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. Amen. That is a good thing right there. It says where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. You know what that means? Hallelujah. It means that you can't go too far. Amen. That you don't that you think Christ can't forgive you because God said, I've got a long right hand. I've got a long arm. And I can reach way down and pick you up out of the gutter. And I can raise you up back on top of where you're supposed to be. God said, Don't you ever think you've got too far from me because I am able to pick you up out of the miry clay. I'm able to put your feet back on the rock. Don't you think, hallelujah, that I'm not too big enough to save you. God will show up for you wherever you are, wherever you find yourself in, whatever situation. Hear me now. People say, Brother Chad, you shouldn't preach like that. Why? You was in one of those messy situations when he found you, was you not? If you wasn't, then good for you. But I don't know about you, but I wasn't. I was in a messy situation. I was in a dirty place. I was in a place was filled with sin. I was in a place full of addiction. I was in a place full of shame shame and guilt. I was in a dirty, messy place, but I thank God that's why he's called the Messiah. The Messiah. Notice the first four letters that it says mess. He's the Messiah. He shows up and pulls you out of your mess, praise God, and saves you, uh, turns your life around. Uh, I'm telling you, he'll put joy in you where there once was guilt and shame. Uh, he'll give you peace and joy from there on out. He'll put a song in your heart, a dance in your step. I'm telling you, when Jesus shows up, he'll turn your life around. Uh, praise God, you'll be telling everybody you see about this man named Jesus and what he's done for you. Uh, you'll let everybody you know say, hey, you got to come meet this man. Uh, you got to come meet this person that changed my life. He will change you. He, I'm telling you. And, and so it's amazing. The people, the Bible says the people that are forgiven the most love the most. So I don't know what it is. I've heard some people when we have testimony services, man, there's some people that they was a lot worse off than I was. And I'm thinking, whoo, praise God, what a mighty testimony. But then I have heard people get up and say, well, I've never drank, I've never smoked, I've never done this, I've never done that. And I say, hey, that's a testimony. Praise God, they never got hooked on none of that stuff. And, and you know what? It's a testimony either way. They can reach people that we can't. Because there's some people that said, oh, I know what they used to do. They used to drink. They used to smoke. They used to do this and they used to do that. And Ah, yeah, yeah, I, I know how they used to be. Well, guess what, folks? When Jesus comes in your life, you ain't who you used to be anymore. You are changed. You are transformed. You are redeemed. When, when you become saved, there's a process that takes place. You're not just saved, but then you are sanctified. Woo, you're justified, you're sanctified, you're set apart, you're redeemed, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. There's something about when you get born again, there's a shift that takes place and God begins to do a work in you. Uh, amen. Whether you can feel it or not, whether you know it or not, God is doing a work in you as long as you allow God to work in your life. Amen. And we're going to talk a little bit about it tonight. But I love what the Bible said, where sin does abound, grace does that much more abound. But here's the question, because when you quote that scripture, people begin to say, Brother Garrett, well, that's awful pie in the sky. That's just good news. And, and, and if sin, where, where sin is, grace much more abounds, then why don't everybody, if Jesus loves sinners, then why don't we just remain sinners? If, if, if grace is going to abound when you sin, then why don't we just keep sinning and get more grace? Listen, there is people that teach this stuff. He loves us. He don't like sin. That's right. He loves you, but he don't like to sin. Amen. Right. It's time to call sin for what it is. It's sin. Yeah. It's sin. And Jesus loves you, but he's not happy with sin. He don't condone sin. Hallelujah to God. He, well, he actually died to keep you out of sin. To deliver you from sin. And so Paul, if you'll notice, he asks a bunch of questions. We're almost, we're in chapter 6 tonight. If you'll notice though, in these last few chapters, he'll always ask a question and then he'll turn right around and he'll answer that question. 
And, and so the very first question in Romans 6 verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. God forbid. God forbid. That's what that means. In other words, he ain't saying no. He's saying flat no. Certainly not. No. No, not because, listen, I know he's a good God. I know he's a forgiving God. I know he's a saving God. But God ain't trying to play games with you. God ain't trying to deal with you over and over and over. He didn't put his son on the cross so you can go out here and do what you want to do. And he comes back and forgives you. Listen, a lot of people got it in their mindset. Well, I'll do my job as a sinner and God can do his job as God. I'll sin and he can forgive me. That's people's mindset, especially this new age mindset. That's what it is. We'll live anyhow we want to live, and we'll call on God later. They don't work that way, does it, brother? Eventually he will. He says, I will turn you over to a reprobate mind. Woo. He says that. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He says that God will turn you over to strong delusion to those that would rather receive not the love of the truth, but they want to believe a lie. He said, I will turn you over to strong delusion and you will be damned. Yes, sir. Who teaches that? A whole lot of people, brother. These new age churches. He said right there that, you know, it don't work that way. Exactly, exactly. A lot of them don't even take Bibles up in the pulpit anymore. Yeah, they don't read very much. Like That's right. They don't, and yeah, when they do get to, if they do teach out of the Bible, they'll, they'll skip around that part. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely, absolutely. But you've got to take God's Word as a whole. You can't just pick what you want. Come on now. You, you can't just pick what you want. you you got to take God's Word from Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to Revelation. It's all God's Word or none of it. Amen. So what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Oh, my goodness. Come on now. He said, how shall we who have died to sin live any longer in it? Woo. Uh, listen, I'm going to say something right here because can you, this is another big question, and I've had people ask this. Brother Chad, can people sin and be a Christian? Why, well, yes, they can. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm a Christian and I sin all the time. We fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us, and when you fall short, that is called sin. Sin means you miss the mark. You miss the mark. You, listen, you and I will never be in God's standard perfect. That's why Jesus had to come. And when you become born again, it's not your works that gets you there. It's Christ's works that gets you there. It says Christ's blood is imputed to us, I meaning it's accounted to us, it's given to us for righteousness. That when Jesus, our God, looks down and he looks at you, he don't see your good works, he sees the blood of Jesus that has covered you. Amen. So he said, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? You say, how did I die to sin? How did I die to something? I'm going to tell you what happened. Whatever day it was that you chose to ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. Somebody, I hope you know what day that was. I hope you remember what day that was. Because that ought to be, that's your birthday. That's your spiritual birthday. Amen. That's a day that you shouldn't forget. Praise God. But the day you asked Jesus into your heart, that very day, the Bible says something supernatural happened to you. Hear me now. Something supernatural happened to you that day. You died. You died. And you rose again. Woo. Glory to God. You died that day. That's why Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will not die. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Any man believe within me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live, saith the Lord God. Listen, we as believers don't die. We just pass over from here to glory. Goodbye, world. Hello, Jesus. Because you have already died. And, and how do you say that, Brother Chad? I'm saying that because you chose to die to the old sin nature. You went ahead and died that day, whenever it was. Mine was back in 2010. I'll tell you right what it was. I actually got saved a long time before that, but it didn't take root. It didn't take root. And then what are you talking about, Brother Chad? I'm saying I wasn't serious about it. I'm saying I went to church. I'm saying I was religious, but I wasn't in it for the right reason. I knew who Jesus was. I loved Jesus, but I loved myself more. If you want to know the truth about it, I love myself more. And I wasn't worrying about Jesus. I was worried about going and chasing girls and going and playing basketball in the gym. That's all I was worried about. That's it. That's it. I wasn't worrying about Jesus. I heard the preacher preach. I heard a lot of good sermons. But that wasn't that what I was there for, Brother John. But there was one time when I went into God's house where I felt the Spirit of God. He began to pull <laughs> He began to pull, and I've told you how I grabbed a hold of that old pew, and my knuckles was wide as wide could be. I wasn't wanting to turn loose. But the Holy Spirit said, Son, it's time to let go. It's time to let go. It's time to give in to the call of God on your life. And we ended up running to the altar. And when I got up, I done told you, I see my whole family get over here getting saved. My sister's over here. This one's over here, and this one's over here. They all got saved. We all got Jesus that night. Been going for the Lord ever since. So I will never forget the day Amen. when Jesus came in and washed my sins away I was dead that day I went down to that altar and I died to sin well brother said you didn't die to sin because you still sin that's what you just said yeah but you got to understand this word right here in the Greek it's not talking about just this one sin it's talking about the sin nature I was disconnected from the mm, I was disconnected from the old vine. You see, the first man Adam, when he come, we were all born into the flesh, into the sin nature. Amen? We were born into the flesh with a nature of sin. That's how we were born. Because of what Adam done and because of what they done in the garden, we were born into sin. But when Jesus, when he come in your life and you were born again, first of all, you died. And I'm going to show this to you right here in just a moment. You died, but you rose again with Jesus. You come up anew. So notice this tonight. Not only did you die, but you come and was a part of his resurrection. Woo! You'll see it in a minute. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Jesus took the sword of the Spirit and he cut the root off from your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And this is what he said. He said, therefore, we were buried. Or let me go on to verse number three. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were baptized. What's this talking about? This is talking about baptism in water. This is talking about after you become born again. Why, why do we get baptized? Well, I'll tell you why. First of all, Jesus told us we needed to do it. But water baptism will not save you. That's right. Water baptism will not save you. Jesus, when you stand before him, he's not looking for somebody that's been washed in the baptistry. He's looking for somebody that's been washed by the blood. Yeah. Amen. That's what Jesus is worried about. But what Jesus done was he made a standard. And he showed us that we need to be baptized. We need, And this is the reason why, Brother John, because even though when Jesus comes in my heart, I felt like I could put hell out with a water pistol. I mean, I was so on fire for God, I'd run around telling everybody, but still, there was something happening. The enemy was whispering in my ear, telling me that I wouldn't really say. And when you become born again, it's like Jesus told Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, how can this be, Lord? I'm an old man. I can't crawl back in my mama's belly anymore. Has anybody ever seen that? <laughs> Woo. 
He said, I can't crawl back in my mama's belly anymore. So Jesus said, Nicodemus, I'm talking spiritual birth. I'm talking you must be born again spiritually. So it is a spiritual thing when you become saved. It's something that you don't necessarily see when you right when you become saved. You don't just necessarily see fireworks and you see everything and know that everything's changed. Now you yourself, you feel it. You can feel the fire of God. You can feel the peace of God. You can feel the love of God. You can feel the freedom of God. But you don't necessarily see a big difference right away, do you? That's when the devil starts coming at you. That's right. And so baptism is something that teaches the child of God something. And it is something that shows us. It is something that not only we, we, we just talk about we got saved, but it is something that we can see, Brother John. That's why we go down to the river, or we go to the creek, or we go to the pond, or we break out the old horse trough, fill it up with water, and even when the water's cold, praise God, or, or whatever, it does not matter. We get in that water, and, and we... we we put people under. We don't sprinkle. We don't. We don't sprinkle around here. What are you talking about? Well, when you kill somebody and you bury them, what happens? You don't sprinkle dirt and have an arm sticking up, do you? No, you cover them up six foot deep. You don't want dead body parts coming up out of the ground. My goodness, great. come on, somebody. It's the same way when Jesus Christ comes in your life and your old man is dead. When you are buried in that watery grave, it is symbolizing I am crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. I am buried with him. And when you bury somebody, you don't leave a hand sticking up. No, you cover them up. And so we bury them in a watery grave, signifying they are dead with Christ. This is something that not only they can feel, but they can see, and they can remember this. Then when you come up, and we do, we are, everybody I've ever baptized, I've always pulled them up. There's something about that. we we got to get them up out of the water. There's some of them I wanted to hold just a little bit longer. <laughs> Yes. Yes. She, she yes. Like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. Like even when she came up. Like, yes. I, like, I don't know if she even it. Like, yes. Like, I was and I think I don't know if you back out. No, no, no. That was long. That was uh, brother Mike. Yeah, it was. Bad. We was there. We was on the bank. I remember that. I remember that. Some people did. They just do it for emotion. Yeah. They don't do it because they're saved. Some people do it because everybody else is doing it. Oh, really? Oh, me. Oh, me. She'll get in there. She'll get in there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. And so we go down. We're crucified with Christ. We die with the Lord Jesus. But then we are raised anew with Him. Amen. That's what baptism is. It is a symbol that you are dead to your old man. It's gone. That's not who you are anymore. Praise God. That's not who I am anymore. That's not who you are anymore. But the old you is dead and gone. The old you died a long time ago. And Christ made a new creature. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, Any man that is in Christ is a new creature. The old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Amen. Everything's become new. And so right here, he says, do you not know that as many as us as were baptized into Christ, we were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. How many thanks God right now that he give you a new life. He give you a new day. He give you a new resurrection. That's the apostle Paul said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. That's what he's talking about. He's like, man, Christ has changed my life. 
And I know him, and I don't just know what people say about him. I have experienced the power of God in my life. Woo. I don't like the old me either, brother. You know what? Does anybody here believe in zombies? You will in just a minute. But tell you, you got some crazy teaching tonight. Oh, just wait. You believe in zombies. Because every once in a while, that old dead man, that old dead man that you buried a long time ago, likes to rise up again. And that's why you got to bury him deep. Come on now. That old thing that used to be on the inside of you begins to get up and begins to walk around. And if you don't crucify that baby one more time again, hallelujah, what Jesus done is good enough. You are saved, praise God. But the old man is trying to rise up. you got to crucify that thing. Paul said, I have to die daily. Because he said the things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. And the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yes. That That's it. Yes. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. When you have nothing else, that you can look back on that and remember. That's what baptism is. It is a symbol. It is an outward expression of an inward experience. And yet you can feel it. There's people that teach us if you're not baptized, you're not going to go to heaven, but those people are wrong. The Bible does not say that. That's right. Think about the thief on the cross, and it wasn't the Apostle Paul's daddy this time. <laughs> the thief on the cross. You know what? He just said, Lord, remember me this day when you go into your kingdom. He said, this day. That mug never went to church. He never paid tithes. Ooh, he never got baptized. He never, no, he never done any works. He never lifted up a hand in praise. He, 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 ooh, he never did anything. But what he did do, he's called on the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Amen. And delivered and set free. And Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Yes. That's right. That's exactly right. He stood up. There you go. There you go. He was unashamed. He was unashamed. Even though he didn't have a, a preacher that taught him anything, he did, all he knew was what he had heard about Jesus. And he said, Lord, I don't know if you are what these people say you are, but I want to know. In other words, he had something in him that wanted Jesus. That means he was seeking him. And the Bible says those that seek shall find. So that's what we got to do. We got to seek for him. Seek for him. And the Bible says if we have uh, been baptized into death and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. You should not be the same as you used to be. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, then certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. If we have been together, what does it say? United together in the likeness of his death. If every one of us in this room has died, amen, together in Christ, then guess what? One of these days we're going to be resurrected together. I can't wait until the trumpet sounds uh, and the voice of God gives the shout. Uh, hallelujah. As John said in the book of Revelation, come up here. And he said, and immediately I was standing before the throne of God. Immediately I was standing before the throne. I love it. I can't wait until the same thing happens to you and I when gravity has to let loose. And we go to sailing through the air. We go meet the Lord Jesus. This ain't something we just talk about. 
This is something that one day is going to happen. You may not understand it, but guess what? I don't understand how I died back then either, and I'm still alive today. I know because Jesus come in and saved my soul. And what Jesus done, brother Steve Maud, I'm going to tell you something. I hadn't seen it, but I can feel it. Oh, yeah. I've not seen Jesus with my own two eyes, but I have seen enough that's happened to know that he's there. I have felt him, and I know that he's there. I may not have ever seen the nail scar prints, but I know my God is there. I feel him. I can hear him. I can sense him. I know he's there. Just like the wind. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's swifter. He's swifter. Like that jet, you can hear it most of the time. But you know what? You look at me like, where's that thing at? You can't never see it, but you can see the trail that it's left behind. Hey, man, that's about the way the Lord is. You, you hear it. You, you sense him. You, 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 you're looking for him. But all you see is the trail that he's left behind. Praise God. I'm telling you, you'll notice that people are being saved. They're being healed. That's when you know Jesus is in the house. I love it. And so he said that we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. There you go. Knowing that our old man was crucified. So maybe your old man was on the cross with him. Knowing your old man was, was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. When God created you in the image and likeness of God. He give you dominion. Remember what the Bible says, Genesis 1, 26. He gives you dominion. He gives you kingdom. Kingship and dominion, power to subdue the nation, to subdue and to, to go forth co-laboring with God. And so he gives you dominion not only over the earth, but he gives you dominion over this flesh. You was given power. Over all of the enemy. So don't you come to me and tell, Brother Chet, I can't help it that I just tell a lie every time I open up my mouth. <laughs> don't you tell me that's another lie. You devil cast you out in Jesus' name. Don't come up to me and expect me to feel sorry saying you can't help yourself from sinning. That's a lie. You've let the devil whisper in your head too long. You can help it. You can help it. God said, I've given you power over all the enemy. I've given you dominion. I've given you authority. And you know where you can tell the devil where he can go. You know the authority that lies in Jesus Christ. Somebody hear me now. You've got power over all the enemy. So don't you tell me you've got to play with sin because it just does something to you if you don't try. Listen, I've had people say that. If I don't just try, yeah, I'm not a drinker, but boy, I got drunk last night. I heard this today, y'all. I went to get gas a while ago, and there's this little girl. She didn't look like she's seven year old, hardly. She said, I'm not a drinker, but last night I drank some moonshine, and I was so drunk. I'm like, well, that's real cute. Proud of that. Woo! She's awful proud of it. She just, she's telling everybody. Yeah. You know what that was? That young girl was a slave to sin. Yeah. Said, Do you know Jesus Christ? She said, Uh uh. I said, I can tell. Do you want to know him? Uh uh. I said, Well, you will know him. You will know him. One day. One day. All I can do now is pray for that young girl. Pray for her and believe that God's going to get a hold of her. There's something about this, this new generation, y'all. Listen. I love them. I love no, she wasn't seven. She's a teenager. She just looked like she was seven year old. She you know, she's probably early twenties, but she just looked like a teenager. Or a young girl. That's what I'm talking about. You see that there's yes. There's been things that's been going on in our country and in this world for years. It's not new. They have demoralized this country. They've demoralized the people. They have brainwashed. They have put people in the educational system that have taught. They have raised up a generation of people that they don't understand the, the goodness of God. They don't understand anything about God. And, and, and when they see this evil that's going on in our world, it don't affect them. 
because they don't know the goodness of God. But if they ever experienced it, if they ever tasted of the Lord one time, Brother Mike, that's all it would take. I'm telling you, if that young girl that I was speaking to a while ago in the gas station in Paris, and I pray that she's watching, I don't know, but Holy Ghost, maybe tune her in. If you're watching, if you'll taste Jesus the way you tasted them moonshine last night, I'm going to tell you something. He will do something for you that moonshine can't do. He will do something for you that alcohol can't do. He'll do something for you that drugs can't do. He'll do something for you. Praise God that that money can't do. That fame can't do. God will save you so your soul and he will write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. He will make a place in heaven for you. Uh, praise the Lord God. He'll fill you up with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you'll think you're drunk sometimes. Uh, amen. But you won't have a hangover. You won't forget where your car is. Praise the Lord. Uh, you might have to be drugged to the car, but you'll make it. Uh, amen. I'm telling and the Lord is good and there's no high like the most high. Amen. There's no high like the most high. That's it, yes sir. Yeah, yeah, I ain't never seen that before. <laughs> you didn't see it then. I didn't see it then either, no. I woke up from, no. I woke up up there. Praise God. Yes ma'am. That's true, yes. I mean, it's crazy. It is. It's crazy Very much so. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and yes, yes. And this was actually written over 3,000 years ago by, by some of the communists in, in China about how to take over a country without ever firing a shot. This is all written. They take over the morals first. They take over the morals they put people in the universities. By the time they have three graduating classes, see, it takes about 15 years for step one to happen. And then they move to step two. Five steps they took the country down without ever firing a shot. We're in the middle of it. That's it, straight from hell. That's it, brother. It's straight from hell. It's straight from hell. And they'll have communist and socialist professors that are teaching our children. That's what Hitler did. Yes, that's right. Those people willingly walked in. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. Propaganda. Propaganda. They'll, they'll tell you this, but it's deception. Where does deception come from? From Satan. Yes. Straight from the pits of hell. I got a cousin, a nephew, my sister boy, he was a Christian. Yes. That's right. He is total socialism. That's it. That's it. I've got friends like that, bro. Went to the universities. You can't tell him that. No, no. Once they get that indoctrinated in them, they will not, will not. No, no, they, they will not budge. But all we can do is fall on our knees and begin to pray because the Holy Spirit's able. He's able. Last week, Neville, Satan, Jackson. Yes. They had a big prayer service. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's good. Most of the time, these little colleges are not like that. Do it. I'm sure they will begin to be. Usually it's the big universities, but absolutely. There you go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Lord, let revival break out at Bevel State. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. There you go. There you go. We we got to open up our mouth. That's it. Declare it. Declare it. Me and my house shall be saved. Me and my children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. What we got to do is realize and wake up yes. who we are. Amen. In Jesus Christ. That's you, brother. We're not just some little person over here that can't do anything. That's but right. We can do anything God. Amen. Amen. Yes, he has. God don't lie. 
That's right. I believe everything God puts in you. Everything, yes. That's right. Amen. It's up to us. That's it. And we've got to realize that it's us that's standing in the way of what God can do. That's it. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes. That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. I'm ready to see him turn it around, ain't you, brother? I'm ready to see him turn this place around. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. We're going to go ahead and decree that as well. Amen. He, he said that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. See, before we met Jesus, you may not have thought you was, but you was a slave to the sin nature. You was a slave. Just like this little girl says a while ago, I'm not a drinker, but boy, I got drunk last night. Why don't you just come out and tell you something like that? She wasn't telling me. She was telling the person in front of her. But I just had to open my mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my goodness. Are you paying that leave? Yeah. <laughs> And now God will give the increase. We just pray that God gives the increase. But uh, that's it. But but see, she says, I'm not a drinker, but I got drunk last night. Because there's something inside of her. There's something inside of her that ain't been broken yet. But if you, that's it. That she's still feeding. And that's, even as a child of God, you can still feed your sin nature. That's why the Bible says we walk not in the flesh, but we walk at the spirit. Because whatever you feed the most is what's going to reign the most in your life. If you feed your flesh more than you feed the Spirit, guess what? Your flesh man is going to come above the Spirit of God in your life. But if you feed your spirit more than you feed the flesh, then guess what's going to happen? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peace beyond all understanding. Oh, hallelujah. All those good things are going to come about in your life. But if you want to feed the flesh, then guess what's going to happen? Anger, bitterness, jealousy, hatred, anger, all these other things that's going to rise up, then depression. Woo. That's it, suicide, yes, that's it. Because when you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. No, no. That's right, yes. Yes, ma'am. Turn it off. That's right. You get that feeling. Yes. Absolutely. That's it. That's it. Exactly. That's it. That's it. And, and I'll say this. The Bible speaks. Jesus taught this way. When Christ comes in and breaks you from the, the slavery of sin, when he frees you, and you're not a slave anymore. Amen. If you're saved, you're not a slave to sin anymore. And when Christ comes in and he breaks the chains off of your life of sin holding you in slavery, here's what happens. He runs every demon out of you. He runs every one of them out and says, today's eviction day, big boys. You've got to go back to the pits of hell from where you come. And he puts them on the run. Jesus gets rid of them. But then all of a sudden, we, we, we come back into the mindset, if we don't continue to walk in the Spirit, and we don't turn the channel, and we don't turn our ear from, from listening to garbage, guess what? We put a welcome sign back up where Jesus just run all them devils out. And the Bible says that, that the demon is going to come back. And not only is he going to come back, but he's going to bring seven of his buddies with him. Come on. This is what Jesus Christ taught. This ain't Brother Chad teaching. This is from Jesus in red letters. Not only does the devil come back or the demon come back, but he brings seven of his buddies from down the road. And he said, hey, there's a vessel that's been swept and clean. And we're going to throw us a party in their life. Uh, and it's going to be that much harder to overcome what you've already been set free from. So if Christ sets you free from something, then you better stay free. Don't you go back to it. If you go back to it, you're allowing seven more. And the next time, 14 more. Then the next time, 21 more. 
And before you know it, you're so full of devils that you don't know how to get back. They're taking you to hell and you are so bound up in slavery. Somebody please hear me tonight. It will take you to hell. Clean your house and who the sun sets free. Let them stay free indeed. Amen. Don't go back to the bondage of sin. Don't go back to the yoke of slavery. It's not worth it, church. It's not worth it. Yes, sir. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You end up going right back to it. Absolutely. No, that's it. That's it. I'm going to tell you something. It's dangerous. You're living in it. And that's, that's why Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Because people wants to do this. Brother Chad, sin is fun for a season. For a season. Whoo. It's quiet there, y'all. Right. They, they make all these commercials look so good and so tempting. But they don't show you to every action there's a consequence. They don't show you for going out and buying a case of beer and getting behind the wheel. They, they show you when they open up that can and the steam comes off and the, the bubbles come up. But they don't show you car or truck wrapped around a power pole after they've hit a family and killed their children. They don't show you through every action there is a consequence. They don't show you how if you go out here and sleep with this one and sleep with that one, how you come up with every STD. Come on, somebody. They don't show you how you go out here and just take a pain pill here or there. And they don't show you how you can't wake up in the morning unless you got a whole bottle beside your bed. But call, listen, through every action there is a consequence. And when you sin, you are sinning against God and you are sinning against your body. Y'all ain't here. Lord, help us tonight. Help us tonight because we, we think we're free, but you, you're going to mess up. Yes. But don't you habitually turn your back on Christ and live in habitual sin. Don't. Don't. When you do, you are damning your soul to hell what he says. He said, I will turn those over to strong delusion because they will not receive the love of the truth. Sad. Listen to what it said. You don't have to be a slave to sin. I've given you dominion. Verse 7 says, For he who has died has been freed from sin. Praise the Lord. If you have died and been born again, you are free from the bondage of sin. And you don't have to be held down by the sin nature any longer. Oh yeah, you're going to mess up at times and you're going to say things that you didn't mean to say. But that don't mean that the sin nature has its grips on you. Christ has cut that off. You have to let them. You have to let them. That's right. You have to let them grips come back. And that is by giving in to it and by totally turning your back on Christ. You see, when we mess up, and you will know, child of God, you will know because the Spirit of God is going to convict you right away. When, when sin comes in, the Spirit of God is going to convict you right then. It's going to, the Spirit will say, son, daughter, you know that ain't right. And right then, you've got to put it under the blood and say, Father, I'm sorry. I put this under the blood. Forgive me, Lord. And when you mess up, fess up and then straighten up. Amen. Straighten up. But if you begin to become calloused and you... Mm, I felt this. When you begin to get calloused and you begin to step out a little bit deeper and you begin to do things that you know you shouldn't be doing, mm, Lord help me. And, and you begin to not have a care anymore and you begin to say, this ain't hard nothing. I've got this under control. Guess what? You ain't got nothing under control. Satan has got you bound already and you don't even know it. Now you're blind and you can't see. You are covered by darkness. See, Jesus said we are not of those of the night. We are of those of the day. In other words, we are not blind to the enemy's devices. But if we give in just a little, he will blind you. He will put his blinders over your eyes that you can't see what he's doing. Let me tell y'all real quick. Sin is sin, no matter how you look at it. That's right. It is. It is. Sin is 
His story is. And, and what was sin 20 years ago is still sin today. It hasn't changed. We was talking earlier. God don't change. God's Word don't change. People change. Time changes. But God don't change. So if it's been sin then, it's sin today. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, I don't even know where I was going with that one. But uh, <laughs> I was going to say something good, too. It'll come yeah, back, Lord. A lot of times people will say, I'll do it this one time. It'll yes. Okay. Yes. Then they do it a second time. I'll yes. It'll be okay. That's right. And then the third, and it just continues. That's right. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm missing church. Yeah. I'll just do it this one yes. time. Yes. Then the next one. That's it. The more, the easier it gets. Does it not? It the, becomes habitual. It becomes habitual, yes. And if you do something for so long, you will continue doing it. Yes. Yes. That's going to be, yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's it. Absolutely. That's it. Either way. Either way. You are. No, no, no. Go ahead. That's it. No. But when I say the armor, because like if you don't and you get that one little chink yes. in your armor and you can get through. That's it. One crack in your armor, that's all he needs. That's it. Just ask Godahab. Had that little crack in his armor and that arrow went right through. That's it. Hallelujah. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Amen. If we died with him, we might also live with him. I could go on right there, but y'all get that, and I'm going to move down. Knowing that Christ, having been raised up from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has what? Dominion over him. Death no longer. That's why I told you a while ago, one of these days, you know what? The Bible says it is appointed on every man wants to die, and that is the judgment. Unless the rapture comes. Unless Jesus comes. The resurrection time. Amen. The, the catching away. Whatever you want to call it. A lot of people has a problem with the word rapture because it's not in the Bible. It's not in English. It is in the, the Greek. It said rapturo. The snatching away. To take out by force. But anyways, we can go on all that. One of these days, brother. One of these days, sister. One of these days, hallelujah, the Bible says that Jesus is going to give that shout. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with him. Hallelujah. We, we believe that, that, that if we died with Christ, we're also going to live with him. We're going to take part of that resurrection. Amen. I almost want to jump right now just to see if I can take off. I, I kind of want to give God some help. Come on, Lord. Help me out here. Hey, y'all know y'all want to do it, do you? Amen. Amen. I'm just practicing. What are you doing? I'm practicing for the rapture. <laughs> Woo, I'm going to buy me some Nikes. <laughs> Hallelujah. These hey dudes, they too flat. That's it. That's it. Amen. But we know, we know, if we die for Christ, we shall live with him. Amen. Amen. For the death that he died, I'm almost done. Yeah, for the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. I love it. For the death that he died, he died sin, to sin once for all. You see, that's what the Lord wants from us. He wants us to crucify that sin nature once for all. In other words, when he saves you from it one time, he won't want you to go back. He don't want you. He wants you to have a made up mind. He wants you to have a mind that says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my family, we're going to follow Him. I, I'm done with my old ways. Or am I still going to mess up? Yes, I'm still going to mess up, but I'm not going to let sin have dominion over me. I'm going to have dominion over it. Amen. I'm not going to just continue living in sin that grace may abound, but I'm going to try to live under the grace of God. But Lord, when I mess up, I'm going to fess up. And then I'm going to straighten up. Amen. And he died for sin once and for all. 
But uh, he goes on and he says, verse 11, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What does that mean, reckon yourselves to be dead? Reckon yourselves to be dead. Count yourself. Count yourself. In other words, tell yourself, I'm dead to my old ways. Do you remember the Apostle Paul, what he wrote in a certain place? He said, I think myself happy. There's some days when you wake up that, that life is hard and you just got to think yourself happy. You just got to think joyful. You just got to think positive because the day is just so tough already. You ain't been up 10 minutes and it just seems like, whoa, my goodness. But you got to think yourself happy. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So the same way you do that, you can do that in your mind and say, I am dead to my old ways. I'm not who I used to be. Y'all like that head bobbing on. I'm not who I used to be. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's it, bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. God has already freed me from that. Praise God. So verse 12 says, Therefore, I'm going to stop on 14. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Do not present your members. What, what is members here? We, we members of a country club now? No. This is an old slang for body parts. In other words, don't let your body parts, don't let this hand, don't let these ears. It says, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. In other words, don't let this hand lead you to sin. Don't let these eyes lead you into sin. Don't let these ears lead you into sin. Don't let these feet run you to mischief. Don't let your mouth, that's right. Don't let your mouth. I used to say, don't let your mouth overload your butt. <laughs> but don't let your mouth. That's well, I guess you could do that with the Lord too. Don't let your mouth overload you. That's right, that's right. Let me share something with you real fast. I, I love in the Old Testament, the Jewish priests, they had this, this uh, ceremony when they were being anointed as priests for the Levitical priesthood. When they would come in, they would take the blood that they would sacrifice of the animals, the lamb's blood, and they would take and they would put the blood on, on the priest's right ear. Then they would put it on his right big finger, on his right hand, and then they would put it on his big toe, on his right foot, symbolizing you are covered by the blood. This ear is the Lord's, hear him. This hand is the Lord's, work for the Lord. This foot is the Lord's, walk with your God. In other words, you're covered by the blood, work for him. You have been covered, you have been paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This mouth is God's mouth now. These ears are God's ears now. This hand is God's hands now. These feet are God's feet now. So while I'm walking into mischief and sin, I need to think, hey, I'm covered by the blood. This is not mine. I'm walking God's feet into a place where I don't need to be. I'm putting my ears, God's ears, in a place where they don't need to be listening to. Come on now, somebody. Yeah, I mean, because if we think, uh, do you ever say, if Jesus was sitting here, when I watch this or when I listen to this, Brother Chad, you're just preaching too hard tonight. No, I'm just telling you, God is here. Know you not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Know you not that the Lord is with you wherever you go. So God, listen, he'll go with you in the crack house. It don't matter. God is there. He's with you. He's your protector. He's your shield. He's your strength. But why are we carrying God into these places? Because we're feeding the, the flesh. We're not feeding the spirit. we got to be cut loose from the sin nature and be set free by the hand of God. Let me finish up with this right here. Yes. Cut it off, yes. That's right, it sure does. If the eye offends you, pluck it out. That's it. A lot of people don't like that verse, Brother Bill. They don't want, they don't want to read it. We're going to leave that verse out, Brother Jen. It's God's word. Then it's in your soul to hell for eternity. That's it, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it says. 
And so it said, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust of it. Do not present your members, your body parts, as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Oh, me. As being alive from the dead and your members or your body parts as instruments of righteousness to God. So instead of going out and sinning with your body, why don't you take your body to church or somewhere and lift up holy hands? Why don't you take your hands and go out and help a neighbor out? Go out and feed the poor. Go out and speak the gospel. Go out and, and run to help somebody. Instead of using them as weapons to sin, why don't you take God's body that he purchased by his blood and go out and affect this world for Jesus? Amen. That's what he's saying. Don't use it to sin. Don't use it as weapons for sin, but use it as an instrument or two for God, for righteousness. So the last verse, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but you are under grace. I thank God tonight that we're not under that law and that sin does not have dominion over us. I thank God that Jesus come to fulfill the law because you and I could never do it. We could never do it. So Christ had to come and fulfill that law. Now do we just throw it away? No. No, we do not. We, we still follow the, the commands of God's Word, but we're not under the law as we used to be. We're under the grace of Christ. Hallelujah. We're under the grace. Woo, Jesus. Remember what grace is? When that cop pulls you over, instead of giving you a ticket, he writes you a check. Thank God. Thank God. There's a lot of us that got a lot of checks, ain't it? We got a lot of checks. That's it. That's it. I'm glad God don't make you pay court costs, ain't you? Because we'd be in trouble. We'd be bankrupt. Some of us are. In our spiritual lives, we're bankrupt. Woo, brother Chad. And just remember, you know, when you're doing all this crazy stuff, he's, he's there. He's, he's there. That's yeah, right. That's right. You ain't, you ain't hiding nothing. No. David said, where can I go where a God can't see me? Can I ascend up into heaven? No, you're there. Can I make my bed in the depths of the ocean? Or if I make my bed in hell, Lord, even there you are. Nowhere can I go from your presence. Amen. Has anybody got anything on tonight's study? Going once, going twice.